Welcome, welcome everyone to Chesmas TV episode 323. Today is January 10th, 2017, and I have arranged myself to cover up my own quote. As you can see, it says, uh, it says uh, something about an orchestra, so I hope you just read it while I was leaning because I'm not leaning again. Today we're playing Horde Chess, which is one of my favorite kinds of chess because it's obnoxious. It brings everyone down to my level. I don't want to waste any more time, so let's go start right now. Here we are in front of the chessboard. Here we are over here next to the chessboard. Let's turn on my logo. Cool. And now let's play some Horde. I like the time control one plus four. Oh, it's already been set up for me. That is so nice. Thank you, computer. That was me doing that. And now I'm losing my internet. Nope, 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 yep. Ah, I'm back and Gots One is playing. All right, so I love horror chess, as I was saying. So let's just get right into it right now. Something's wrong with my view. My head's been cut off, but I can make that better by, um, uh, can I make that better? I don't think I can make that better. Uh, by leaning back, no, no. What can I do about this? I don't like it when my head's cut off. I can move myself down and then I can move that up. There we go. Why is this so different? It used to be great. So I like in Horde Chess now to make this diagonal battery, so I'm working on that right now, and then playing this move to just put every attacker on it. I like this way of playing, so let's see how that goes. In Horde Chess, you simply must capture all the pawns to win, the, unless you're the pawns, in which case you must checkmate. Um, but really, that means you just need to promote, because once you have a queen, you are unstoppably slippery. I mean, seriously. How, how would you capture a queen that has no king to protect? It's kind of like a single woman. She just, she listens to no one. Actually, no women listen, listen to anyone, so never mind about that. It's kind of like a woman of any kind. But when white gets a queen, you cannot check white because he has no king at all. So his queen just slips around. It's impossible to catch and you will lose. Hmm. Hmm. This is an interesting position. I do kind of like it. I want to keep working on this area, so I'm going to play my knight here. This is an unusual pleasantry that I'm allowed to move. Usually the enemy pawn is advanced, so my knight can't get here. But I'm actually going to sacrifice my knight in this area and break down on the queen side. I really like focusing on the queen side as I advance here. So there's that. Okay, now I've lost my knight. Great, next step is to lose my rook, so let's do that. As you can see, one more sacrifice, and I'm going to be there. This is the last square to sacrifice on. So queen coming around like this, and then pew, and I'm going to be back to the back rank. The, the goal of horror chess with the pieces, of course, is to slip in behind the back rank. Once you're there, you win. Actually, once you're there, the game really starts, because you can then take all of these things. There's no way for them to defend it. They're kind of like turtles on their backs. And when a turtle is on its back, its front is exposed. Does that make sense? Obviously. I think I'll take this here. Yeah. Then, 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 then. then. And then you can eat it. But when a turtle is right side up, why do you have to do turn it over? Obviously. Why am I telling you this? Haven't you eaten a turtle before? It's like step one of eating a turtle. I don't know if I should do anything here. But if he pushes again, I might get uncomfortable. Hmm. I think I'll be fine if he pushes, so let's just sacrifice there. Hello, hello, people in the chat. I see your humans. That's great. Sometimes I just broadcast your robots, but today it's humans out there. VIRM says it's a new microphone. No, it's a super old microphone. You haven't been around in a while, I can tell. Stop think. it, Siri. Ooh, this is scary. I think I'm okay. I'll just take all the things. So this area is what's important to me right now because it's the scary part. So I am not taking this pawn because these pawns aren't very scary to me. I mean, because I have these pawns to face them. So it's really going to be all about getting these guys worked down. And I think I might go in that direction specifically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I could take this. But you see this pawn guarded by this pawn, guarded by this pawn, guarded by this pawn. So I think I really need to hit this back pawn first in order to capture everything here i gotta play the back i think oh he could have played that move while my bishop was out that would have been an instant loss for me so feel so thankful um about his oversight there so i'll take this i actually pretty pleased about this sequence here now it's time to throw this move in Yep, yep, this just tore him to pieces. Gots is down, down, and dead. Down and dead, you're dead, and you're down. The 
IRM asked me if you can have my old blue Yeti microphone. I made bank with my old blue Yeti. If you look at the old episodes, you can actually see this microphone that looks like a, a male organ. And it cost $100, and then I used it for two years, and then what did I sell it for? Something like $60, $70, which is amazingly a lot of money for how, how much use I got out of it. It still worked great, so I mean, I guess it was worth that. But I sold that on to another human being who wanted a microphone, and man, you know what he wanted to do with that microphone? I could not stop laughing when he told me, because I was just laughing on the inside because I didn't want to be impolite, and I certainly didn't want to back out of the deal. I, ooh, I... <clears throat> sold it to a guy who wanted to use it for virtual country music. Virtual, like not real country music, but like imaginary country music. I am not kidding. I never do. Mm. Mm. Hold on. Let me drink from this face. Mm. Great. He was a DJ in an imaginary universe. You've heard of Second Life, which is like a virtual reality game. He uh, he did a thing with there where he made music there. Why am I... I mean, last episode, I was so beautiful here. And I need to make myself way bigger. Because I talk with my hands, so you got to see my hands. This is all we can do, huh? Weird. Last time it was so good. Student Fish is on. Let's play him. He was he was here last um, when we had the canceled episode. And he was so excited. So I really want to send him a smiling face. So the point of this episode is not actually to entertain you with horde chess. Nor is the point horde chess. You don't know it yet, but I'm about to tell you the point of this episode, which is to make you a successful person. Remember last episode, the one before the canceled one, where uh, we t actually talked about. What did we talk about? Uh, we talked about something inspirational. Someone put a comment on the YouTube channel. They were like, on the video, and they were like, wow, this was unexpectedly inspirational because uh, they did not expect any inspiration from Chesmas, obviously. So today we're playing Horde Chess, and the Horde is just a huge number of pawns, as you can see, and they all look the same. So the question is, how, if you are a pawn among these pawns, are you going to rise above the crowd and be a successful pawn? I think I'll just capture all these things. I mean, it's not a very good move, but hey, I won't lose from doing it. I'll lose later. So I'll play like that. <clears throat> How will you rise above the crowd? Because let's take a situation where you want to better yourself. One way you want to do that is to like get a job, right? Because then you got income, then you can buy more chess sets. I'm just kidding. That's not what you buy. And, uh, and, and good things happen from there. So in this economy, it might be hard to get that dream job. There might be like multiple applicants. So how do you stand out Stand out um, from the other applicants? That's what I'm going to tell you right now because it's way more interesting than Horde Chess. I'm just kidding. Horde is better, but I'm telling you this anyway because I have a captive audience and that's you. So uh, first I'm going to move another chess thing here. It's one of these chess things I'm going to move. I think I'll move this. I'm actually really um, interested to see if he, if he kills himself right here. Oh, he's killing himself over there. Over here and in here. Ooh, he's breaking through. Oh, boy, I can't give you any advice about interviews right now. I have to stroke my chin to pacify. You see this right here? This pacifying behavior because I'm nervous. Hmm. 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 The commentary got so much better. Now it's just some low grunting. Nope, that's not what you were watching. Nope, this is actually Chesma's TV. The low grunting is not part of it. Uh I can't help it. When I look at chess positions, I just start grunting. You know, it's a visceral response. Uh, you see that? You see that? It's totally, totally involuntary. So I'm going to let that rook sit there, and then I'm going to capture it on this square. I think that might slow him down a little. Because otherwise I have to, you know, this pawn chain is very important to me, and if I break it, then I immediately have to push. Um, I don't know what colors I was using, but I have to immediately repair it. By playing this way, I don't. So that's why I'm doing this way. Mm. Yeah, okay. Let's keep it 2100. Got this chat. Oh, you can't see my time. Do I care about that? So his queen has to take the long way around. That's pretty good. Mm. 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 It's really important to keep a pawn on every file, at least one pawn. So these pawns are quite important, especially if I lose this one and need this one and vice versa. But I actually think I'm going to, um, 
lose this one. That's what I think based on my study of the universe. See how this goes. Guess I'll capture that way because this pawn had no future stuck behind the bishop. So at this point, I'll go here. Oh. Am I winning? Oh, it's so close. I don't know if I can... I want to hold every pawn, especially the ones that are more advanced. Pawns that are almost promotion, like these, almost promotion, that's what these are, are so much more valuable. The pawns that aren't almost promotion are not so much more valuable. You got that? Great. So this, this... He should start worrying here. I might actually capture toward the center, which is unusual for me. But I don't have very many of these pawns. Oh, it's falling apart. Oh, it's so difficult. <clears throat> that was not good. I really didn't want to lose all of my pawns on those files. Remember when I mentioned that... Uh, that you want to keep at least one on each file. So these files have zero. That's not at least one. So that's why I'm feeling uh, worried about that. All right, push here right now, I think. Maybe here first. See if he really wants to bury his queen. He does not. Okay. So I'm going to push. He takes. I push. He can't stop that. So let's try it. Oh, it's so close. Steuben Fish, very good player. Even though it sounds kind of like stupid fish. Capture towards center again. I'm a weird player today. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh my God, I'm, oh, I'm focusing so hard. I don't have any, I have a, I can't even say anything funny right now because I'm focused so much on this chessboard. I mean, you should keep eye contact, but I'm just keeping chess contact right here. I think he might be in trouble. He cannot take this because this advance really is unstoppable. And if I check him and then push here, he might have trouble. Oh. Oh, I'm starting that moaning again. It's so close. Here comes the queen. So can I push here? Should I push here? Should I just check him? I'll try this. Because when I play here, it's going to be hard to take my things. And that's good. He might sacrifice his rook right now. On this pawn. Oh, oh my god. I had seven seconds. I just have to focus here. I'm sorry, guys. It's very important to me to win this game every game I'm in. Very important. I'm going to pre-move this capture to gain some time if he sacrifices. Mm. I do have that pawn in the corner. See that? I was covering it with my shoulder. Look, it's gone. It's back. I hate it when I cover my own pawns and then I forget I have them. <laughs> mm. oh, what's going to happen? He can't make progress unless he sacrifices his rook, right? His, he can't be taking my back pawns. His rook can't get to a better position and neither can his king. So if he doesn't sacrifice, then I can advance here. Slowly and surely. So this is good. I love it when the enemy can't, um, you know, continue to eat you. Because you can always make progress. Your pawns have no choice but to advance, 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 advance. So I can make progress here. He cannot. Is he really going to come in the back like this? See, look how uncomfortable this is for him. He can't take anything. <laughs> I find it to be humorous. Okay, so now he's going to sacrifice his rook. But he's in no wor no better position. He's in a worse position now. So now I'll check him. Capture this way. Oh man, is he uncomfortable or what? He got one pawn for that rook, and he is not making progress again. Man, I think he's in trouble now. He's going to be annoyed. But that is that is a lot of pawns right there, and the only way to stop them is to become kind of a wimp. This is a lot of pawns. Let's bring all the pawns up. Let's be awesome here. Uh. 
Okay, here. This should do it with this move. He gives up. Yeah, so he takes this pawn, and I have this move, and I win. I win! That was great. I really felt after I lost these these two last pawns on these files, so these files were empty, I felt I was going to lose, but I didn't because, as you can see, I won, which is how to avoid losing is by winning. That was great. He says, well played. Let's play another game with stupid fish. Um, something like that. Good luck. God luck. He says, ah, that's very similar to my moaning. I think we're having a mutual moment here. So now that I've erased my chess pieces, as you can see over there, I'm going to add how to beat uh, a crowd, like in an interview or if you're trying to move up in your job or something like that. So let me let me put some text on here. Uh, add text. Properties of text. I always run low on time, so... Don't worry about this. Beat the crowd, it says. <laughs> it's easy to beat the crowd. You have to become a crowd control officer, and then you get a great big baton. You got to the crowd, and what do you do? You beat the crowd! It's so great. Oh, yes, that's how to beat the crowd. You have to attend riots to do that. You can't just go into malls and beat the crowd. So the first way to move ahead of the crowd, of the horde in life, is to... It's very interesting. You have to make people like you, right? And it's very difficult to do that when you're a chess player because nobody really thinks chess players have any social skills. And the reason they don't think that is because uh, chess players don't have any social skills. So the way to change that around, to change that perception is to... Number one, I'm going to give you three steps because I like the number three I can keep it in my head, is to make eye contact. I'm just going to say eye contact. Um, eye contact is important, and as you can see, I'm looking right in the camera right now, see how important it is. So do you notice, have you watched streamers who uh, don't make eye contact, and then other streamers who do? Maybe you have, or maybe you've just only seen me, and for that I pity you. I need to make something cool happen right here. But it really makes a difference. It really makes a difference when they look at the camera and talk. It's just something psychological. Human beings, in essence, you're not going to like this, but in essence, we are animals. <laughs> like uh, like um, dogs or cats. Uh, we're quite a bit more advanced, but there's certain emotional responses that we, that we have without thinking about it. And one of those is when someone makes eye contact with you, you feel connected with them. You feel as a peer with them. And, and you feel like, oh, this is cool, a free pawn. With them, with them. Whereas if they don't, if they're looking at the floor, you, you have this, this unexplainable, visceral, unstoppable feeling that they're inferior uh, because they are. If you think about like royalty, you come into the throne room, nobody stares at the king. It's disrespectful because it makes you seem like an equal with the king. Of course, I don't have a king in my country, but just imagine a throne room with a king, okay? And then imagine that what I'm saying is true because that's always better if you do that. Because <laughs> that makes you seem, uh, makes you seem like you're, you know, as good as the king. So people look down or, you know, that's what you're supposed to do in the throne room. I've never been to a throne room, so I guess I'm just talking um, out of ignorance here. But in a situation where you're trying to impress somebody or move up in a, in a scenario, if you're looking down, they will, without realizing it, think that you are an inferior human being. What in the world am I doing? I'm going to run out of time. They actually, they don't even know they think this, but they do because it's their animal brain. And it's like, that person is not as good as me. And so when they go to promote somebody in your work group, are they going to promote the guy who's inferior? No, they're going to promote the superior guy who's making eye contact, who's like, this guy's a winner because he's as good as me. So if you make eye contact, you will take advantage of that subconscious reaction and, uh, and appear to be a more competent, better person. That's my advice, number one. And sometimes it's really, really easy for people because it's just natural to make eye contact. But for a lot of chess players, it's not because we look at the chessboard because that's what's actually important, right? And so when it comes to people, some of us, we just don't do that so naturally. Some people are very good at it naturally. Other people, they really have to work at it. So I would recommend paying attention to see if you're already good at it or how you can improve at it because just looking at someone in the eyes. You know, another thing I want to say about that is People can so tell. It's amazing, amazing how well the brain can tell that you are looking at their eyes versus slightly off. I mean, I didn't write make nose contact because they'll know. They'll be like, what's on my nose? Even though it's this far from their eyes, it's like an inch away and you are several meters away, their brain can tell that it's not quite the eyes. That's just because of um, the animalness of their brain. They have that amazing ability to tell whether it's eye contact. 
So um, yeah, it's just a it's just a subconscious subconscious thing. That's what I meant to say. Number two, it's advice number two to beat the crowd is to take all their pawns. <laughs> That's what I'm working on right now. That's usually a bad move, and it's probably a bad move here. But um, I think I might be able to break in this way, which is very unorthodox. But because these both have advanced really far, these, these whatever, um, past this area, there might actually be a weakness on this diagonal. So that's what I'm going for right now. You notice that eye contact right there? Made you feel connected to this game? It's my subtle strategy. So I'm in. Now, I need to break down these walls and fast. So I think I'm going to go this direction. Once again, the threat is in these files, so I'm going to take the stuff back here as opposed to um, the stuff over here, which it would be a waste of time to go after. Okay, how do I, how do I not die here? Am I just dead right now? I'm out of time, so I'll play this move. Stupid fish, I think you beat me. I think it's hopeless. You can promote now. Oh, too much eye contact. I lose this game. Good job, stupid fish. That was 1-1. One, one. I'm going to play against another player just to make sure everyone gets a chance to play, but that was great. Great play. Um, it took me so long to break through on the queen side, and when I finally did it on this square, the enemy pawns were quite advanced. I'm going to throw a challenge out into the main arena, though, and if, if no one joins it after a while, you can certainly join. We can certainly play again. I just want to make sure we get a variety of opponents. I don't want to lose to you every game. You know what I mean? Hmm. Let's pour some water on my lap. So my next point of advice for you to beat the crowd is to, it's a very simple one, is to smile. And it's so intuitive, but sometimes it's not, it's not immediately obvious. You should smile when you're unhappy. And that just sounds like I'm stupid, right? But besides the fact that I'm actually stupid, you should smile when you are unhappy. Can I say this enough times? No, because you're never going to believe it no matter how many times I say it, but it is really true. So let me just say it one more time. Ooh, I lost a pawn. It's not what I meant to say. You should smile even when you're unhappy. In fact, you should smile especially when you're unhappy. Because when you're happy, it's kind of natural, right? You're just going to do it. But when you're unhappy and you smile, you are you instantly become a more pleasant person to be around. And there's another benefit that I'll mention later. But when you're when you're unhappy or or at least neutral, um, people once again their their natural response is do I want to be around this person? Does it take energy to be around this person? Energy taking versus energy giving is a dynamic here where you kind of because you're taking energy to exist near somebody, they don't really want to be around you. And once again, they're not thinking about it. They're not thinking, oh, Joe is so obnoxious because when I'm near him, I just feel tired. But they do feel more tired if you have kind of a more negative attitude or you're not smiling. And without realizing it, they will conclude that they don't want to spend time around you. And so if you're in an interview and you're not smiling, they're going to think, I don't want to hire this guy because if I do I have to spend time around him and there's going to be a constant energy drain. And they're not actually thinking it. It's simply subconscious. So when someone makes that final decision on who to promote or who to hire or who to make friends with, they're not thinking through everything. They're actually just kind of feeling through everything based on, you know, how does this person make me feel, which is based on eye contact and smiling. Or how does um how does and you know, that's actually all it is, is how does this person make me feel? It turns out that's the only point that anyone ever makes a decision with is is how does this person make me feel? Nothing else matters. That's why you watch chess with Stevie. Even though there's way better chess players. I mean, I'm a bad chess player. If you, let's just admit it right now, okay? I, that's why we're playing horde chess. It's not even chess. Look at this. I'm pointing. My camera doesn't show my hands. But look, this is horde chess because I can't play chess. And yet you're watching. It's because you feel better when you watch me um, because you feel better when you are around people who you're better than. <laughs> Study show. I made that up. The other benefit that I said I was going to mention soon, I'm losing all my pawns here, so I'm going to distract myself from that pain, is when you smile, you actually become 
happier. You're, it's, it's supposed to be a one-way thing where you're happy so you smile, but it's actually you smile so you're happy. You can affect your emotions and the trajectory of your feelings by taking that first step, with, which seems wrong. I mean, it just seems like you're fooling yourself. Why would you smile when you're not happy? However, you actually become happier by doing it the wrong way. It's almost like you're lying to yourself which I, I don't really like that because when I'm unhappy, I want to be unhappy. It's not like I'm, oh, I'm so sad that I'm unhappy. I'm like, yes, right now I'm grumpy and I love it. But um, it's, the downside is you're grumpy. So you can actually ungrumpize yourself by smiling. And that's a weird thing. But no, I think it's a benefit. If you ever give up being grumpy. So uh, he's broken in, but only with a rook. And rooks are not the most amazing capture things because they don't move diagonally. News flash. So I might be okay here. The third and most interesting, the fourth and most interesting uh, piece of advice here for advancing is uh, <clears throat> have a great handshake. If I can spell that. Handshake. Hand handshake. Hand You'll need a good handshake. Shake. There we are. Why am I out of time again? This always happens to me. <laughs> this is uh, a strange one also, but it's really, really key, especially in the workplace. I've shaken hands with people, and when I walk away from that handshake, I'm like, wow, I want to marry this person. Well, maybe not quite, but it makes a huge, huge, huge difference. I cannot emphasize this enough, having a good handshake. The reason is people get, a, once again, a visceral impression of you based on your handshake. If you're too limp, they will think of you as an inferior spineless dude because maybe you are spineless. And that's why you're limp. Like you go to shake your hand and you just let them shake your hand like a fish. That is a losery thing to do. And if you're shaking hands out that way, you need to find somebody and practice shaking hands with them because a strong assertive handshake makes a big difference in the way people kind of per per perceive you, burp perceive you, if you know what I mean. But if you're too assertive, that can be a problem too, especially if after you take their hand, then you grab their elbow with your other hand, and then you kind of grab their shoulder, and then you slap them on the cheek. That's maybe too too assertive. That's probably where the line is drawn. Uh, especially another problem might be if you squeeze their hand so hard, it, it like comes off. Those are some ideas for too hard. But in general, more assertive is better. You also don't want it to last too long. You don't want them to get uncomfortable. But it also shouldn't be too short. It needs to be just right in every way. And when it is, it really makes a big difference in terms of their perception of you. So those are three tips. Make eye contact, smile, and have a compelling assertive handshake that will get you a long ways in life, especially for chess players, because chess players are nerdy, introverted people who um, are good at chess and bad at life in general. So no offense to you guys who are good at chess and bad at life, but it's true. So if you work on these areas also, I think you'll find that... Uh, the bad at life part goes away. And that's just, that's just great because being good at chess, it's not bad. It's great to be good at chess. It's just, it's just, you also have to be good at life, right? So, so mix that in there and then you'll be a perfect human being. Fantastic. I only have pawns on half the board right now. So I blame you for this because I spend all this time trying to benefit you instead of benefit my chess position. And I feel that it might, might be the reason I have no pawns on half my chess board. This is kind of like having no face. Like if you've, if you've got a stroke, and so you can't move this out of your place. We can't talk like this right now. I'm not going to decide. This is how I feel. So I have to win this, this chess game with only half my face. Very difficult. I think I captured this way, though. Not that it matters. I could still do it. I mean, Milliways might give me a win here. Hmm. Better push this one. I am almost dead. Ooh, that was a painful capture right there. I think this would be my only hope, which is also no hope, but uh, he plays there. Okay, so let's scare the queen so that I can do this. Could this work? No, because he takes here next. So if I push and he takes here, I could push there. It's not going to be good enough. So let's. I have to push this though. If I push this one, he could take that one, and then I would have no pawns on that file. Okay. So now I hope he takes this, which he doesn't. So I'm dead. 
You beat me, Millaways. But on the other hand, I talked about handshakes. So, you know, you can't have everything in life. You either talk about handshakes or you win. And I, in this case, I chose handshakes. Good game. I'll just type GG, which means good game. That was pretty fun for me because I got to talk about something I'm passionate about. But also, hopefully, uh, game two out of the four games we played was nice as well. Next episode, we're going to play another chess variant. Remember last episode when we played forwards chess, your pieces could only go forwards? That was... um. It was cool, but it was kind of weird, right? Because, I mean, like, you got these checks that were sideways and, and backward, and you had to obey them, and, and so it really, really was a weird chess game. But one person said, as a comment in the YouTube channel, you know what would be better in this chess whiz? What if you could also move sideways, like, so the rooks could do things? That would make the rooks so much better, because in that variant, the rooks could only move forward until they got to the end rank, and then they couldn't move at all. It was kind of like life, where you're born, and all you can do is get older, and get older, and get older, and then suddenly you're dead, and you can't do anything. That's like being a rook in forwards chess. Well, in sideways and forwards chess, you can do everything that's a rook can do except for move backward so we're going to try forwards and sideways chess next episode where the pieces can move forwards or sideways great name isn't it i'm really looking forward to it to see if it's as good as forwards chess that's going to be saturday at 4 p.m gmt this has been chess with tv thanks for watching